all right uh, everyone we are here okay so i uh, just wanted to do a sound check if the sound is okay or is it too loud just let me know if the sound is fine and uh, All right. So, good evening, everyone. We are uh, here today, and uh, today I'm going to tell you a mythological story that comes from the books of Indian mythologies. Now, okay. Thank you, Divyansh. So I have always considered mythology as a lighthouse of human civilization and uh, you know the times when society and individuals are facing with grim times or they get lost. Mythology with its uh, philosophical guidance woven into beautiful stories guides us towards the right direction. The world needs mythology more than ever in today's time not because what's going on right now but to prepare us for what is yet to come because as we all know when all this is over we will find ourselves facing a brand new world Hinduism with uh, its mythological insights, uh, it deals with uh, the change in the most profound and sophisticated manner. For in our Indian mythologies, change is not linear, you know, it's, uh, it's cyclic. Meaning that uh, change is not only imperative, but also the only constant in the whole timeline of the universe. Whether we realize it or not, but we are witnessing the birth of a brand new world right now in front of our eyes. And today, I am going to tell you the story of the world when it was first created. And I am going to illustrate and tell you about the fundamental elements of that first universe and which is the holy Trinity. Now, at the beginning of this universe, and the story that I am going to tell you comes from the books of Vedas. At the beginning, there was nothing. There was no light. There was no darkness either. There was no sound, but there was no silence also. There was no matter and there was no energy as well. In that nothingness then appears a thought and in that thought appears a dream. That thought as we know we call it the Narayan, the Supreme Consciousness. And as the Supreme Consciousness begins to dream, in that dream appears a golden egg. And that golden egg, as we know, is also called 
हिरण्य गर्भ है इन साइड दिस जायट इनकम्प्रीहेंसिबल गोल्डन एग एंड आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन टू यू द साइज ऑफ दिस गोल्डन एग इन द स्टोरी एज इट फॉलोज द गोल्डन एग विच इज कॉल्ड द हिरण्य गर्भ इन साइड दैट देन अपियर्स द फर्स्ट होली वॉटर्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड कॉल द अनंत सागर एप्ली नेम द इन्फिनेट ओशियन on the surface of the ocean appears a slight ripple and in that ripple appears a seed as the seed floats on top of the ocean the seed begins to take the shape of a four armed vishnu as vishnu appears lying on the bed of the ocean floating there peacefully he opens his eyes and he looks around and he sees nothing around him so he rests his eyes and he closes his eyes as he closes his eyes he begins to dream and in that dream he begins a stem rising from his belly button as the stem rises and moves upward on the top of the stem appears a lotus the first flora and fauna of the universe and that's why lotus as you see is used as the most divine flowers in the hands of the deities that followed after the creation as this lotus opens gently on the surface of the lotus appears a one head brahma the lord brahma as we know has four heads but when he first appears in the story of creation he only has one head how the four heads of brahma created well there is another story behind that as brahma appears on top of the lotus he opens his eyes half like a lazy man who is day dreaming and in those day dreams of brahma appears the first light of the universe in that half opened eye appears everything all the universes all the forces of the universes that we know as of today and all the multiple universes come into being brahma the creative force builds the entire universe and within that the entire galaxies and here my friends i'm going to explain you the size of that golden egg in the dream of the supreme consciousness which is narayan appears the golden egg in golden egg appears vishnu in vishnu's dreams appears brahma in brahma's half opened eyes appears all the universes and in one of those universes galaxies in billions of galaxies one of the galaxies exists our sun and around the sun rotates our tiny planet and that gives you the size the incomprehensible size of the golden egg as brahma floats on the lotus connected to the belly, uh, belly button of vishnu and the two men and the two powers come into being in the universe the two powers vishnu and brahma they represent the duality that exists in all of the creation which including ourselves as well the duality that cause that is made of the desire to the desire of newness which comes from brahma and the desire to maintain what exists that comes from vishnu and this duality then obviously creates conflict in our lives and when we are stuck 
in the dilemma of choosing one of them the answer to solve that dilemma also lies in the story of Indian mythologies and the answer of that conflict comes in the form of the third power that appears in the following story as Brahma has been created and his uh, he is called the, the creator of the world and there appears multiple universes okay so Brahma is then uh, given the name of the creator of the world and Vishnu then begins to maintain the world of Brahma now two men existing in one place leads to conflict right and same appears in the lives of our gods also so there appears a conflict between Brahma and Vishnu and one day the conflict leads to an argument now Brahma says that I am the creator of the world so I am most supreme and Vishnu says you are nothing but a dream so you cannot be supreme I am the one who is supreme and this argument of supremacy between the two gods leads to an heated exchange now this is not an argument of normal human beings right so this is the argument of the gods themselves and so such power is released from this argument that the universes they begin to get destroyed these universes then are under threat because of the argument of Brahma and Vishnu as the argument reaches to its crescendo and the most powerful energies are coming out of it suddenly between them appears a gigantic blazing pillar with no end and no beginning to it in sight and Brahma and Vishnu they, they immediately depart and they look at each other and they, they confirm to each other that none of them has created this pillar so Brahma goes to Vishnu and says that uh, maybe this is the answer to our conflict the one who will find the end of this pillar will be supreme so Vishnu takes the shape of a boar and Brahma takes the shape of a goose and Vishnu in the shape of a boar begins to dig deep down into the ground to find the source of the pillar and Brahma flies up towards the top of the pillar to find the uh, uh, towards the top of the pillar to find the other end of it now millions of years pass and they are unable to find the the end of this pillar and there then they, they, they begin to realize that there is no end to this pillar okay I'm just gonna check before we return to the story uh, quickly okay so as they begin to, to go towards each other they begin to realize that that there is no end to this pillar which is there so they decide to come back to their place which is there and they come to realize that there is a power which is more powerful than them which exists outside their realm and their control and and that power is definitely not in their control the moment they realize that they also realize that they are not actually the most supreme or the mo or the most powerful ones in the creation that realization calms them down and the moment they accept this new power from that gigantic pillar with long black hair up to the knees snakes 
waving all over the body and a trident in the hand appears Shiva and as Shiva appears in front of them they both bow to him and accept him as the most powerful among three of them Shiva's birth completes the triangle of the Holy Trinity and provides the stability that is required for the sustenance of this universe. Okay, and uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is when all three gods are created in the universe. Brahma is given the, the responsibility of creating the cyclic change in the universe that we experience all the time, every time when there is a new universe that is beginning. Okay, so the birth of Shiva, our third uh, god, uh, is also celebrated as uh, 12 Jyotirlings around India uh, that we know. And uh, the, jo the Jyotirlings are in the shape of a pillar uh, from which Shiva appears in front of Brahma and Vishnu. And it, till today, if you, if you visit the temples, you can see how Shiva is shown coming out of the pillar. Now, when the Holy Trinity has been created and I was telling you that Brahma, when he, is, he comes into being for the first time, he has only one head. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you the story of uh, creation of his four heads. As Brahma is now being being rewarded and called the creator of the world, uh, he has uh, he has created all the universe, every creation which is there, and finally he decides to make his best creation, getting into the depth of his mind and bringing the the most aesthetic part of his uh, of his skill set. He dreams of his new creation. And the moment this creation appears in front of his eyes, floating like a dandelion around his eyes, he is completely mesmerized looking at it. And what he had created was the first woman of the universe. Brahma is so mesmerized looking at his own creation that he cannot even blink for a moment. The new creation the first lady as we can call her of the universe then now opens her mouth and here comes the first sound of the cosmos the first sound of the universe and as she opens her, her mouth she says the first word of the universe and that is om the sound of Om is thus celebrated being the first sound that has been ever created in the world. Now, because of that sound that this woman creates, Brahma gives her the name Saraswati. Saras means smooth 
and beautiful and, and, and vibrant. Vati means talk, the way of speech, the walk. So smooth, beautiful speech becomes Saraswati is the name of this first woman. And Brahma is completely mesmerized by Saraswati and he cannot take his eyes off her. As Saraswati, when the sound resides that vibrates all through the universes, Saraswati opens her eyes and she finds Brahma gazing at her constantly. right? And this makes her extremely uncomfortable. So she floats to the right side of Brahma's head and from there appears a second head of Brahma as if out of a clay. Then she goes to the back of Brahma and there appears the third head of Brahma and then she finally comes to the left side of Brahma and there appears the fourth face of Brahma. Now having this complete 360 degree view, now Saraswati cannot avoid Brahma's gaze anymore. So she flies on the top to avoid the, uh, to avoid the stare of Brahma's eyes. But there appears a fifth head of Brahma. Now this five-headed Brahma is constantly watching Saraswati. Saraswati then runs towards earth and she hides her herself on planet earth. But earth is nothing but a dream of Brahma. So Brahma chases Saraswati down on earth and as he finds her and Saraswati notices him, she takes the form of a cow. That becomes the first animal to appear on earth and that is also the reason that cow is celebrated and considered holy in Hinduism. As Saraswati takes the form of a cow, Brahma takes the form of a bull and uh, he copulates with her and from that copulation comes the calves, the first species of the animals. Saraswati then keep on changing her form, keep on transforming herself into various animals and insects and Brahma then keeps on transforming herself into the male version of all these animals. She takes the form of a peacock and Brahma takes a uh, form of a male peacock and she takes the form of a deer and Brahma takes the form of a male deer and so far and so forth and they continue to breed. Finally, when entire earth is filled with the species of these animals created by the cosmic union of Brahma and Saraswati. Seeing no solution in sight, Saraswati then prays to Lord Shiva, you know, and Shiva appears in front of Saraswati. Saraswati then tells Shiva that being born from the body of Brahma, I consider myself as his daughter, but the sin that he has committed is unforgivable. Now this enraged Shiva so much <coughs> that, that he cuts the fifth head of Brahma with his thumbnail. If you look at closely at lot of Shiva sculptures and I'm not talking about the Shiva that you see in your calendar or that you hang in your house but actually the ancient sculptures of Shiva which are made or carved in stone you might notice a skull attached to the thumb of Shiva and that is the skull of the fifth head of Brahma on the thumb of Shiva. Having his fifth head cut, Brahma comes back to his senses and he calms down. And Shiva then tells Brahma that I am going to bring, mor I am going to bring morality to this, this sin that you have created and I am going to invent a system which he calls marriage. And thus Brahma and Saraswati gets married to each other and becomes the first holy couple of Indian mythologies. Brahma and Saraswati uh, are married for, for a long time and uh, there is another very interesting story of why all of us in the world do not pray to Brahma. The father, the creator who created this world is, co is constantly ignored by all of us and the story behind that is as interesting as the story of the creation. 
when brahma had created the world and he had married uh, saraswati he also creates seven rishis called the sapt rishis and delegates the management of earth and the universe to these seven sapt rishis he has also created his his manas putra the the first man uh, from his imagination power called manu who had then uh, populated the war, uh, earth and and there is entire population of uh, of humans that exist on planet earth further the earth is divided into four parts talk about social di- distancing uh, in the four categories of brahma vishnu sorry uh, in the four categories of brahman kshatriya vaish and shudra now world has come into being a system has been formed and it's existing but there are asuras and devtas that have also come into being and in one of such fights during one of the asuras brahma uses his lotus to cut his head while he was doing that a petal of lotus falls down on earth and creates a crack the crack is immediately filled with the water from the infinite ocean the anand sagar and in those waters which exist till today in the state of rajasthan and as we famously know that city the town is called pushkar the town of pushkar got its name uh, because the petal from brahma's lotus falls on earth and creates that lake in pushkar pushkar literally means pushp which means flower and kar which means hand the flower that falls from the hand of brahma becomes pushp pushpakar and then eventually the name becomes pushkar so such happens and uh, lake has been created so brahma comes down to earth and says that i have to purify this lake because since it has been created by the by the touch of my petal uh, and it has been created on earth so i have to purify it so brahma comes down on earth and he calls a priest and he the priest says all right we have to do a yagya to purify the lake so brahma says all right let's start the yagya so priest tells him that we cannot start the yagya without your wife being on the yagya with you uh, husband and wife have to sit together as a as a part of the yagya so brahma sends one of his uh, one of his uh, assistant uh, to call uh, saraswati for the yagya he goes to saraswati and uh, and tells saraswati that brahma is uh, is doing a yagya and he he is requesting your uh, holy uh, presence for the yagya now saraswati says that you know i mean i ha- i i cannot come immediately i have to i have to prepare myself and get ready to come to earth and 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 come into public being so tells tell brahma that i am going to be late for the yagya but i will come there so wait for me now assistant comes back and he come goes to brahma and tells him that uh, saraswati is is going to take some time to come to yagya now the priest turns to brahma and says that uh, this cannot be because uh, the murat for the yagya is right now uh, so either you 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 get a woman uh, to be with you on this yagya as your wife or we will miss the murat so brahma says all right so he sees a woman passing by in that village and uh, she is a milkmaid uh, a, a ordinary human uh, just walking around for her her duties and uh, brahma takes the form of a handsome man and he goes to her and he proposes to her that he wish to marry her now uh, that woman looks at uh, this man and and she agrees on the spot and she's like all right uh, i am ready to marry you the man then comes back into his his true form of brahma and says that but before you get married to me i have to purify you as well so he turns the woman into a grass and then he feeds the grass to the cow and the grass goes through the digestive system of the cows and comes out as cow dung and then he turns that cow dung back into a woman and then he says now you are purified because since you have gone through the digestive system of the holy animal which is cow so now you are at par with deities and i am going to now marry you now this woman comes uh, with brahma on the yagya and as she is uh, sitting there she opens her mouth now being purified and 
and uh, blessed with the divinity. The moment she opens her mouth, there is a mantra that comes out of her mouth. And that is the mantra that we use till today whenever we do a yagya. Do you know which mantra is this? The mantra is called Gayatri Mantra. And that lady is called Gayatri. Gay and Istri. The woman that comes out of a cow becomes Gayatri. And Gayatri then gets married to Brahma and becomes his second wife. Now Brahma and Gayatri are sitting on the holy dais of the Yagya and the Yagya has begun. But at the same time, Saraswati arrives at the spot and she sees Gayatri sitting there with Brahma. And like every woman who will see her husband in this situation, she reacts in the same manner. And she is extremely angry. And she gets so enraged by this situation that she curses everybody. She curses the priest, she curses Gayatri, but most importantly, she curses Brahma. And she tells Brahma that because of this sin that you have done, your own creation will forget you and nobody will remember you as their father and you will never ever be prayed on earth. And because of the curse of Gayatri, <coughs> till today, Brahma is not prayed anywhere in the world. There is no temple of Brahma except in Pushkar. But even in Pushkar, when they do the prayer in the evening or in the morning, they do not pray to Brahma. The prayer that happens, it happens for the Pushkar lake. And thus, Brahma, now married to two women, is frozen in time in the town of Pushkar. Even if you go today to Pushkar, you will see that right in the center of the town is the temple of Brahma. But on the other side, on either side of the town, on a higher hill, is a big temple of Saraswati, also called Savitri. And on the other hill is a tiny and little timid hill. And there is a smaller temple of the second wife of Brahma called Gayatri. And between the two wives is stuck our father, the creator, Brahma, eternally. So, uh, that was the, uh, the story of creation of the Holy Trinity and the creation of the world that we live in today. As I have always said that mythologies are lighthouse of human civilization that guide us in our darkest times. And as the story I told you about the birth of Shiva and whose mere appearance in front of Vishnu and Brahma calms them down and creates a balance in the universe. What we are witnessing right now is also awakening of Shiva. And in this situation, all we can do and we must do is to allow Shiva to create the balance in the world and open our mind for clarity and wisdom that is coming our way. Now, as a bonus story, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this evening with this beautiful story uh, and a, a, a very, very less heard story about the creation. As we all know that I began the story from, from the concept of the golden egg and within that golden egg appears the holy waters and on top of that appears Vishnu whose belly button then appears Brahma and in Brahma's eyes appears all the world and between Brahma and Vishnu appears Shiva. But what is beyond 
that golden egg that is called Hiranyagarbh. What lies beyond that? Now, ladies and gentlemen, the true creator, the, the true energy of the world that flows not only into that golden egg or into the universe, but in you, in me, and in everything that exists around us, lies way beyond into the depth outside the golden egg. And if you consider the golden egg as the womb of the world, the womb belongs to the true source of the creation and that true source, the true energy that flows into everything is called Shakti, the feminine energy of the world. And the first thought that appears in the nothingness is nothing but a thought of this feminine energy in whose dream appears the golden egg. And there is another story where this feminine energy takes the shape of a female <coughs> and gets married to the most powerful of the Holy Trinity, Shiva. And that female, who is an incarnation of Shakti, the feminine energy itself, is called Sati. Now that is a story for another time, uh, but today I am going to end this session with this beautiful thought that we are living in the times when mythology is being made rigid and history is being made flexible. It is our duty and our responsibility to preserve these pearls of wisdom, these stories of wisdom, not only for ourselves, but for our children, because this will keep guiding them in their darkest hours. Sahapedia, India Heritage Works and Cobalt Blue Foundation are working to preserve and to keep these stories alive for you and make you connect with them so they can make sense for you in your modern life. This is Sandeep Verma from Cobalt Blue Foundation and today you heard the story of the birth of the Holy Trinity Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Have a good evening, stay safe, stay calm and believe in the stories of India. Thank you. If you have any any comments, any questions, or, or anything that you that you want to want to discuss, uh, you can do that in the comment section, and I will try to answer them for you uh, about the stories that we have just mentioned. answer them for you uh, about the stories that we have just mentioned. All right. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so I will be closing this uh, uh, section and uh, today's uh, session and I just want to say thanks to India Heritage Works uh, for for providing this platform and allowing us to, to tell the story of uh, Holy Trinity and hope uh, we will keep telling you these beautiful stories once again and till then, good night. All right, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen.